Hey everyone, and welcome to this week's Factorial Friday Facts, number 408, Statistics Improvements and Linux Adventures. I'm Exterminator, and thank you for joining me for this one. And uh, I was hoping for a kind of bigger one in terms of like maybe revealing a new planet. Uh, that we, we thought there was a pattern <laughs> with like how many Friday Facts it was between planet reveals, because it was the case one time, but it shows that it's not the case every time. But this is still a good one. Uh, there, there's some really great stuff here for all the Linux users and the statistic improvements are pretty awesome as well. So let's just hop in. So the statistics bit is by Clonin. So accumulator graph is what we're going to start with. It's a little bit tricky when you transition from steam power to solar panel accumulators to know if you have enough capacity in the system to survive the cold dark nights. Generally you might just wait until nighttime and see if your factory blacks out. If so, build more solar and accumulators, which is basically, yeah, what I do um, until I just know I've overbuilt, which is not really the best practice uh, to, to do it that way. Uh, so they say, you know, it would be helpful and convenient to see the stats of accumulator charge levels. So we added such information. Uh, so this is now super helpful. So you can, well, we'll read this too. The, the main reason it was more critical was on Fulgoro, the production from lightning at nighttime is much less predictable, so it's much more important to see the timeline of the accumulator charge. And we can see that over here, as well as some other new stuff, which they'll uh, explain lower down. But we have our satisfaction, the production, this is just how it's always been. And then for accumulator charge, uh, we can actually see like the graph, which is super nice. So you can see, uh, like here, it doesn't actually uh, bottom out which is good, right? Because that means that you're not completely <laughs> running out. Uh, um, and this is a 10 minute. So yeah, it, it shows, you know, down here, the very lowest point, it is around 6.8 uh, gigajoules, which is not zero, obviously. So you can just tell easily from this, okay, I have enough to make it through the night. Uh, if it were just completely bottoming out and staying there, you, you know, for a couple, for a minute or two, or however long that the rest of the night is, then, uh, then it would obviously be bottoming out and completely emptying. But that's super, super nice. So I really, really like that simple addition, but it just makes it more clear. And especially since we'll be using uh, accumulators a lot more on Fulgura, it makes sense as well. So that's pretty sweet. And then we go to science graph. So you can track science pack con uh, production, well, and consumption uh, GUI in the GUI, but that, that doesn't account for things like productivity models and the new research productivity technologies. Right, and this is a big thing because especially so when we, when Colonel Well and I did uh, the 2.0 sim playthrough, uh, we, we kind of near the end, we had to start having like a different way we would say things where we would be like, okay, our science per minute is this, but our ESPM effective science per minute is this other thing, which would be taking into account the productivity from the labs, which is your like the uh, research productivity, technologies and then uh, also the productivity modules and all that uh, but now they've actually added that for 2.0 onto the graph for the game and you can see over here so science it shows the total number of all of these added together oh, sorry excuse me a big yawn i apologize um it shows all these added together now the icon for it is probably placeholder i hope <laughs> it looks a little bit off uh but yeah, it may just be a placeholder. It, it does seem like it really doesn't jive with the rest of the stuff, but uh, this is super nice. So one, you don't have to uh, add up everything, but so re represents overall research output. Yeah, so so this is basically representing the the research output more so than the actual pack production, which makes sense, uh, I suppose, because it, it kind of is taking that into account too, because even if you have productivity in your uh, like assemblers making the science, you're still obviously, I would assume, going to be consuming most of that science. And then you also get the pro, pro, the productivity, like lab research stuff. So this essentially shows you. So it's, it's actually not all these combined together. Sorry, it's the, uh, like essentially with the prod and all that, what you're actually, how much research you're actually putting towards the the science, like the research you're trying to do. We're, we're making like 750 or something and six something. Uh, and then this is saying 773 is like the, overall output, if that makes sense, right? And then we kind of got a hint of this uh, or early on, but we have now different surface production, which is pretty cool. So, and I was a little worried when I first read this, cause I was like, well, what if I want 
to still see the overall production. So don't worry, you can still change this. Uh, there's many different options they offer. So it was basically tolerable initially uh, for them to have it be global, but after a little bit, it was not really gonna work because you needed to see more specific area location things. So for instance, on platforms, you know they need to know if they were producing enough fuel and ammo to keep the ride going, etc. So now you can switch between uh, multiple different surfaces. So you can see platform volcano supply production. This one was novice production. And then it's super helpful when checking if a specific planet producing enough when some items are crafted in many places. So then actual volcanic production, you can see here Volcanus. Uh, so, and then we also added a checkbox to switch to global statistics view. So all possibilities are available to the player. Yeah, so you can do, so you can just check this and it will just show everything across all planets, all platforms, everything basically how it does now. And this is pretty cool. So this seems to just change based on either what planet you're on or which one you're viewing. Cause you know, you can uh, like map view to other planets. I would assume if you open the production view on an, like map viewing on another planet, it would show production for that planet you're looking at, or obviously if you're on that planet, right? And then you could just switch it to global. So this is super nice. Now, I, I did see a few comments in the forum and stuff, and I would agree with these comments. And I would also would prefer this. I would like uh, personally, rather than having it switch based on having a switch based on like which thing you're looking at is just basically have a drop down like they, they, they have one for quality, which we're going to look at in just a second. But I would like that same thing for the planets because it, it would be a lot easier, I think, to like compare things or even just have the ability to compare different planets uh, production and platforms production. Because if I look at like Volcanus and I want to see the production of something, I don't know, steel. Uh, if I want to compare that to novice, I have to like go out of here, map view back to novice, reopen the production graph and pull it up, which I mean, isn't hard. Like it's still, you know, a, a, a second or two. It's not the worst thing, but it would be cool. I think if you could just have a drop down where you could just select the platforms or planets, I, I, I kind of think that would work better in my opinion. Uh, but maybe they have a reason for not wanting to do that, that they didn't mention. But personally, that would be really my only gripe with it is just the way you kind of access it. And then we come down to quality graphs. So going deeper still, they want to dissect the production by what quality the produced items are. And this is really great because let me tell you when, again, in our 2.0 sim, when we had the janky quality thing, it, you know, they, they, they couldn't really implement separate categories that you could select in the production. It just showed it like mixed in with everything. And man, it was like really hard to find stuff. You could search. But it was still like there was so many different things all garbled together. But now you can just do all of it. Like you can select per thing. So all that's separate, all that merged. Uh, if you want to just see what you're making of something, even including all the different qualities, uh, nor, and then all the qualities themselves, right? And you can do the same for consumption, which I really, really like. And again, for anyone else who may be worrying, I, the devs did confirm that basically if you haven't researched quality, yet where you decide to turn it off because I'm pretty sure it will be a thing you can just turn off in your uh, starting like map settings or whatever. Uh, it just won't show this. So it's not going to be like confusing. If you haven't gotten there yet, this won't show up until you actually have quality one way or the other. Uh, so there's that. And they say, what do you think? Are there any other statistic improvements you can think of for 2.0? And personally, I think that's mostly it for me. Like, uh, I'm pretty happy with the stats graphs. Uh, really, the only thing I would want, like I said, is either the ability to compare planets or just be able to have a drop down to select between the different services rather than having to actually go to each one. Uh, like I can understand, obviously, you need to be able to go to each one to do most things, but I don't think needing to see the production should require that because it's just a it's just a stat. It's just <laughs> numbers and information, right? You're not actually like interacting with any of the builds or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, so there's that. I would love to hear any thoughts you have with this. Like what stuff do you think is missing? Do you like these changes? Do you not like these changes? And definitely let the devs know too. That's 
you know, really important. So, so they know. Uh, so that's all the stats improvements, which I think are all good in my opinion. And then there's some, a bunch of Linux stuff now that this is super technical. It's super long. Uh, I had a uh, bar create a nice summary for me again, and we're just going to hop right into that for anyone who does use Linux and, or even if you don't, if you're interested in this, you can read this as well. But basically the summary is we start with uh, Wayland basically, and this is by Rayguard, uh, all of this. So basically it details the challenges of adding Wayland support to Factorio, including the need for custom code to handle generating files and dealing with window decorations required by some desktop environments like GNOME. Uh, so we can kind of just see here, X is left, Wayland is right. And yeah, <laughs> very blurry, not blurry. So definitely, uh, definitely better there. And then client side decorations, uh, we kind of come down. So the game has decorations now, but the uh, theme doesn't match. So there's that. And then uh, window resizing seizures, which is not great. We can watch a nine second thing on this. Oh, dear Lord. Yeah, I'm not... <laughs> No, thanks. <laughs> yeah, photosensitivity warning. Maybe I should put this above that. <laughs> but yeah, this uh, this is pretty horrific. So I would assume they got this fixed. And then we go to dynamic linked libraries. So the game relies on some dynamically linked libraries that are becoming depreciated on Linux, such as X11 and Pulse Audio. And Rhaegar describes the efforts to remove the dependencies. So there's all this. I don't understand any of it. Uh, but... I think it's fixed. So there's that. And then Clipbo, Clipboard Woes, the game uses legacy code to handle clipboard functionality because uh, the preferred SDL library doesn't support certain clipboard features. The author is working to upstream, uh, author being Rayguard, uh, the code to SDL so it can be used by other games, which is pretty awesome. So they're basically making a fix, I think, that even other games can use, which is pretty awesome. And then lastly, probably the biggest thing, and I'm actually super jealous of this, is asynchronous saving. So a lot of us don't know, I didn't know this, that Factorio has a support for saving your game in the background without freezing while it does it, but it, it's tucked away and it's only available apparently for Mac OS and Linux. And I'm really jealous. <laughs> um, but, but basically, uh, they have now like unhidden it, I guess, right? So the basically Rayguard uh, would like to promote this feature, but it is working to address some limitations of the bugs. So there are some limitations of bugs with it, but Basically, Rhaegar just says if you're playing on Linux and Mac OS to enable it, which, yeah, I would. If I could, that would be amazing to, to not have it freeze when it saves. And they give instructions uh, right here for doing that. So, man, if you use Mac or Mac or Linux, then you, you get an extra feature, which is pretty awesome. Uh, continuing development, this has been uh, but a glimpse of the work that Rhaegar has been doing to ensure Factorio on Linux is the best that it can be. There's still many open bugs and reports on other issues, but I'm generally happy to say that things can confidently say Factorio has great Linux support, which is awesome, right? Because I know quite a few people do use Linux and, uh, you know, it's a lot of games maybe don't support it as well. And Factorio does a really, really great job of that. So. That's gonna do it for this one. Fingers crossed, maybe the next one will be some really big reveal of, of something. But I, again, I can't really complain about these quality of life stuff because it's always great. Uh, but that's gonna do it for this one, guys. Pretty short uh, in terms of the video, but I hope you are uh, liking these stats changes as I am. As always, leave your thoughts below. If you enjoyed, a like is appreciated too. And if you're new, welcome and feel free to subscribe to keep up with all future content. But until next time, I look forward to seeing you all and do take care.